God bless everybody today. It is July 8th, 2023. Um, I found this article. I think it falls in line with everything that we've been talking about. Um, it's from Vox. Um, not extremely familiar with this organization, but I thought the article did lay out um, the Sweden issue, why Kurds are going to play an important part in uh, what's coming up next and how Turkey is going to affect uh, the situation. So um, let's look at this article and then I have an extremely important video coming out um, either today or tomorrow depending on how fast I can put it together because it's it's got a lot um, of detail that I'm going to put into this next video. I believe I have found, and I may be wrong, believe I have found Erdogan's attack plan. I know that's saying a lot, but I believe that the historical event has happened in the past that will show us exactly what is to come in the future and how that's going to affect us as we move forward. But I want to set that video up with this because this is what's going to lead into this attack on uh, Iran and the Kurds or the Medes by Turkey in the next month or so um, as we move forward. And there's a couple dates that are extremely important, I think, as we move forward also that we should be looking at. So let's get into this article first and then we'll go from there. Now in this article it tries to explain to us um, and I've been trying to explain this to you also, but I think this goes along with what I've been talking about, um, why this is happening and what's going to happen. I've been talking about how Erdogan, I believe, will leave NATO and um, tell Sweden that basically they're not going to allow their ascension into NATO. And so this article came out and I thought this was extremely important. Um, so if you look at this and you realize that not only it, Turkey is um, denying their membership, but you got Hungary, okay? And so this is a roadblock because if they don't um, allow this to happen, if it takes all um, members to ratify uh, someone getting into NATO, and so this would be, um, as indicated in this article, actually a veto. And you can see, and there's an art, another article I want to bring up into this conversation. I think it's going to add to this conversation. But the Turkish leader Erdogan is refusing to drop his objections because of the Koran burning, um, the effigy in Sweden, all these things. It requires all members of NATO to ratify these things. Um, this is like a veto. If um, either one of them don't, uh, you know, approve of this, it's all about the Swedish Kurdish ties. And I've talked about why the Kurdish are so important because they're the Medes in history. And if you go into Daniel eight, that's all he talks about is Darius the Mede and the Medes. Okay. And the video that I'm going to bring to you will show you exactly why these Medes are important. And I'm telling you, I truly believe that I found extremely profound map that shows us exactly how this is going to go down in the next few months. And I'm going to present it because... But I want to present it properly because I believe that it's going to show us exactly how this attack is going to play out and how Iran will literally fall. So, but Erdogan's going to make his move first, and that's why this is important because I believe in this process of Sweden, he is going to leave NATO, which is then going to start this invasion process. Um, now, the last invasion was in November of last year through Operation Claw Sword. Will he rename it, move it to a different operation as he moves forward, or will he just leave it the same because it's 
a perpetual operation. I don't know how that will work. Um, so this got really crazy because they let um, Finland in to NATO, but they would not allow Sweden to come in because they um, included some, they want Turkey, um, Turkey wants them to include all these anti-new terrorist laws. They want them in effect by June 1st. This really didn't happen. Um, Sweden um, hasn't been following the due process of law and um, with this Koran burning outside of Stockholm, this has added more tension. This has happened twice now, uh, just recently and um, a few months ago, like in March or something, I believe, uh, is when that originally broke, uh, that first uh, burning. And we had the, uh, or we had that young Kurdish woman uh, killed in Iran. Um, all this is affecting also what's going on in Sweden and Sweden's um, in Turkey's eyes is protecting the Kurds and so um, he wants these all these Kurdish people extradited to him um, so uh, we're having this uh, really interesting meeting on Monday and this is going to start moving quickly you got to understand this we're at the end of we're at the end of this, and so we're going to start moving into this war quickly at this point, and this is going to break down quickly. So, um, NATO's furious in general with Turkey that they won't allow this to happen. Um, they're going to have a meeting on Monday. Um, they have a massive impasse here. Um, but Turkey's trying to get some things out of this. He wants weapons and things. So, um, you know, as you go into this article, it starts to indicate about, you know, F-16s and different things like that that they're trying to parlay with. And I keep saying he's trying to arm himself before he goes down there. He's not going to. He's trying to get every lever that he can and all leverage possible so that when he does this attack, he can weather this. Now realize the United States, you know, we have one or two, you know, we have we have possibly multiple bases, but two two or three major bases, um, and we just added a new base in uh, the northern part of Syria with about 900 guys. So we really don't have any real presence there. Um, so this is going to cause us a real problem because we just don't have the ability. We're mainly uh, technical um, over there and training and things like that. So as you can see, as you walk through this article, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. You guys can read some of this. You need to come out and educate yourself to what is going on out here. And so when you walk through this, you realize, and there you go, there's about the F-16s. Um, Biden administration is holding off on this um, because of all the issues going on here and they're really not sure of Turkey's intentions and so they will they sell these F-16s and if they deny him the F-16s and that will probably be another reason he would potentially break from this coalition and uh, leave NATO because if they're not getting any cooperation, then why would you stay anyway? And so when you go through here, you're going to realize that this is all about the Kurds, okay? And we're having these people being extradited and forced. Turkey's forcing Sweden and these other countries to bring these Kurdish people to him to uh, prosecute them in Turkish law. And so... This is extremely important as we move forward because, like I say, he believes, Erdogan believes, that the Kurds are, or the Medes are, a terrorist organization. And he's going to genocide them as he's been doing for decades, okay? This hasn't been an overnight sensation for Turkey. He's going to finally finish this job as we move forward. So, as you look at this and realize this is coming... Okay, it's coming quickly. And this membership is going to be, I believe, the kickoff to the next 
portion of this attack that's coming up and we're going to see that happen out um, happen quickly um, NATO also doesn't want to drag this out so this is going to um, something's going to break on this front soon and we're going to see just how this is going to play out um, but in my opinion and I've been saying this for a while NATO um, will not see Turkey allow Sweden in until they leave um, and then they'll have to decide what to do with Hungary you know maybe Hungary will just leave too and then we'll start to see a breakup of a literal breakup of NATO and some of this um, you know these 20 some nations um, that are in NATO um, and you might start to see this fragment down so um, I just wanted to bring this report to you um, I'm going to try to explain exactly how Erdogan is going to move through the Middle East and what he's going to do next and I've talked about many times about how this is going to be a past event that reoccurs in the future and that it's already been played out in front of us if we know our history and if you go into the Bible and you look at what God gives us as references now I don't usually get out of the Bible a whole lot um, you realize that if you look at anything that I'm showing you it comes directly out of the Bible and I show you how history affects us and how that will affect us in the future and so I don't really move too far from that um, pattern because I think all the answers are found in the Bible itself and so I think it's extremely important that we use these references and that we can't extrapolate too far beyond the Bible and what it's giving us um, as information and that it will then ex distort it over time and so we see all these different um, messages coming out but they're moving these different regional groups throughout time when it really only happened in Daniel's time and we need to look at Daniel's time and not how it extrapolates later into the future and how these different groups of people move through time into Europe and Russia and all these different things you have to look at what Daniel's seeing and that he's talking about this area of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar and how it's going to affect the Middle East and the area and the footprint that he shows us in these animals and the statue and all these things and how this links together and so we need to understand why it's important that we follow what God gives us and not that we break it out much further than that because then it really starts to to really distort the picture so you really can't see what's coming and we get into areas of what I call the weeds and it really doesn't make any sense after a while like Russia is Rosh which has no biblical meaning whatsoever other than the translation error um, I'm sorry but um, it just doesn't make any sense so I'm going to do this next video. This is ex probably one of the most important videos that I'm going to do in a long, long time because I believe it truly gives us the path of how this is going to be laid out and what's going to take place in potentially the next few months. So God bless everybody. Find the open door. Realize that this man is going to move the earth and heaven soon. Um, he is chosen for this particular event he's the white horseman that's going to bring this catalyst to the Middle East and change the whole the whole picture so we need to understand what he's about and that he's ideologically driven and that he's going to create massive havoc here soon God bless everybody find the open door find Jesus um, I will present this next video um, hopefully in the next day or so um, there's quite a bit of setup and information I'm putting into it so I want to do a good job and make sure that it's clear 
and concise and gives you a potential map that's coming up so that you can understand exactly what's coming. God bless. Have a great day.